Welcome at 07 Citizens, Black here from Cast of Black Gaming, and this is a review for Drake's all-new starter ship, the Cutter. Now remember, if this is not your first time checking out my channel, then please consider subbing, and while you're at it, if you wouldn't mind helping me fight the evil YouTube algorithm by liking this video, and even commenting on how you're liking the Cutter so far, or if you're thinking about picking it up and have more questions this review doesn't answer, then I'll be happy to answer them in the comments below. And so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get to the review. First here on the screen are the stats for the Drake Cutter. The stock weapon complement is two size 2 pilot controlled hardpoints, which comes stock with two gimbaled size 1 laser repeaters. There are also two size 2 missile racks that come with four size 1 missiles equipped. The vehicle dimensions are 20 meters in length, 16 meters across its beam and width, and 6 meters in height. It seats one passenger. The cargo is 4 SCU. It does have 650k of internal inventory stowage. The combat speed is 160 meters per second, and the max overall speed is 1050 meters per second. The vehicle claim time from the ASOP terminal is 1 minute, but you can of course pay credits to get it down to retrieve it without a wait. Its other ship components are one size one shield, one size one cooler, one size one power plant, and one size one quantum drive. It has two size one hydrogen fuel tanks and two size one quantum fuel tanks. So for many ships, this is a real concern for some of the ship owners and can determine if they in fact use a ship daily or decide to go with something different that they find more convenient to get in and out of. And so I include the time it takes to enter a ship for those owners who want to weigh that into their decision. For the Drake Cutter, it only takes about 12 to 15 seconds to enter the ship, which also includes closing the ramp behind you as you go to keep stowaways from entering without you knowing it. For such a small ship, this ship does have two doors you need to go through, which can be annoying for some, but I did not find it to be so in any Anything under 30 seconds, in my opinion, is pretty fast. The Drake Cutter is honestly not bad in terms of living space for what you pay. You get a bed and even a closet sized bathroom with a sink, shower, and toilet, which is nice. The bed allows you to log out from your ship, which I have a feeling might be working better with persistent entity streaming and especially server meshing when it comes next year. We're already hearing amazing things about the entity streaming on Evocati now, so this will most certainly get better, but I'm off topic here. The only thing the Cutter is missing is some sort of food storage like a fridge, which would have been nice to see. Other than that, you get some personal storage storage and a cute light near the bed for reading or uh, not feeling scared of the dark when you go to log out. With the cutter, you get a two pack of paints to choose from, or three if you're a concierge member who has spent $1,000 or more on the game. The two colors are light beam and wind chill, or a white and yellow one. I've been using a yellow paint job as it gives me a magical school bus vibe, but the groundswell one is also very nice and has more of a military look I like as well. Overall, there's some decent colors for this ship, and I'm glad to see options. The cutter's purpose is that of a starter ship which specializes in being able to handle multiple roles, including being easily handled, making for a good ship to help new pilots be able to maneuver it in many situations. Although its living quarters are sparse, as previously mentioned, it certainly is not as bad as some ships of equal or even greater size in this department. While its weapons might be limited, it still offers up some offensive and defensive capabilities for lower tiered bounties, and since it is a tough little ship for its size, it can handle itself decently in the right hands. The cargo hold is where the ship really shines. Not so much in how much trade you can put in, but in what types of land vehicles that can fit inside. Now with some testing, I was able to park the Greycat STV inside, and when put in at this angle, it allows you to be able to easily get in and out of the vehicle, and still be able to get around through the inside of the cutter. The mule also fits inside, and even though it's a tight fit, being able to go in through the front hatch of the mule allows you to be able to fit the mule inside and keep the back hatch of the cutter closed behind it. Now an even more impressive feat is the ability to park the the normal gray cat rock inside. Now with this one you'll not be able to close the back hatch of the cutter, but for just picking it up and mining on the same planet, it works as you can see me demonstrate here on a run that I did.
The cutter is also good for taking cargo quests and even going to the manned outpost on, say, Microtech, and soon on most every planet and moon as there are a lot more outposts coming with 318. And taking out the guards without ever leaving the ship is nice. Then you can land, grab the cargo, and even your enemy's armor and weapons to stow on board the cutter. Its size makes it fit nicely in these outposts to get up close and personal. I even used the cutter to grab a cargo box that was too high up to reach, and with no tractor beam with me, I just jumped out of the back of the hatch onto the platform to retrieve the cargo box and then back into the ship. I didn't even mention the best part of the ship. With its large fuel tanks, you were able to roam about the verse and maybe beyond without the need to refuel as often as any ship in its class. The cutter comes with some pretty basic stock components, but the only two you really need to worry about upgrading are the shields and quantum drive, and then the missiles depending on if you want to swap those out or not. The guns that come stock on the hard points are what most people would use anyway, so this ship can easily be upgraded for around 60,000 credits, making it easy for newcomers to buy the parts needed with just a few illegal monitor missions or cargo missions, or even a good haul from the rock mining vehicle I mentioned earlier. As part of the upgrades, I also wanted to show the different travel times this ship will have when you compare the stock engine with an upgraded one. So for instance, if you upgraded this ship's stock engine, the Foxfire, to the VK-00, the trip from Crusader to Hurston would go from taking 6 minutes and 31 seconds to 4 minutes and 34 seconds. The trip from Microtech to Arc Corp would go from taking 10 minutes and 50 seconds to 6 minutes and 9 seconds, which should give you an idea of how important and time-saving it can be to upgrade your quantum drive, which is why I always recommend it as one of the very first upgrades that you aim for. So the first part of this vehicle has been mostly facts. Now we come to the part where it's more subjective, and although I try not to really push my opinion too much on others, I'm going to give you my take coming from a reasonable place, trying to avoid hyping things for the sake of hype. So how does the cutter look? This opinion is pretty much either a love it or hate it feeling with little in between. I happen to like the rough, bare component stylings of the Drake ships, and for me this ship fits in nicely to the overall aesthetic that Drake pushes. Perhaps it's why the military did not approve the Cutlass series back when Drake was in the running for a military contract. But their loss was our win, and the Cutter just continues this line of great affordable ships that have a distinct look all their own, and yet can be versatile and something for the common person to own. The Cutter has been memed since its release with people comparing it to the Eagle 5 from Spaceballs, and even the Mystery Machine due to its van shape. But jokes aside, this ship has a unique look to it for its class and size that I welcome and look forward to seeing more of while we're out in the verse. So how does the cutter handle in flight? Now, if you're looking for a ship that flies as loose as the Aurora line or as well handling for combat as the Titan, then the cutter will be sort of a letdown on those fronts, but fits in kind of nice in between and still handles very well, even if you won't be doing fancy banks. The ship flies really well and flies as it looks for lack of a better term. You wouldn't expect a utility van to drive like a Porsche, and so you should not expect the cutter to handle like one of those aforementioned ships, but yet it still flies well and is fun and doesn't feel cheap like you'll lose parts if you come in a little hot for a landing. While flying around a target in combat, it turns pretty good, but what impressed me most was the speed control in close proximity with another ship. It felt responsive and was not hard to maneuver. While flying low over planets or moon surfaces and atmosphere, it's a little harder to turn, but still handles well and will be a good ship for those new players, whether you're flying with flight sticks or a keyboard. Overall, I was very satisfied with how it handled. And this is a category that means different things to different people, and the best I can do is offer up my own opinion on why I think either it is or is not worth the real money price or grind in game. And I do try to keep in mind that a great many people truly watch what they spend, and so I like to find reasons to justify something's worth, especially in comparison to similarly priced ships that might be close in the same category. I also offer up tips on buying ships and how you can incrementally move up to larger or more ships and good times to do this throughout the year. So with the cutter, especially on its initial sale price of $45, it's pretty much a steal. You cannot get a better starter ship, at least for now. 
I think even if it's $60, it's well worth the price just for the fact that it's so versatile. Being able to cart a rock around to do some land mining is pretty nice, even if it's not built for it and the back hatch can't close. It's still very much possible and similar to how a rock sits out in the open on the Nomad. The ship does not have the living amenities of the Nomad, but it's cheaper to only be slightly less useful. CIG has really upped their standards for what a starter ship can be and should be, and I only hope we get some more starter ships from the other manufacturers, as I believe they should all have one to allow players the chance to focus on one brand as they start their tour in the verse to maybe lead them down a path of upgrades that falls within a single brand if they so choose. Alright, so here we are at how I think this ship could be made to be more useful or more improved. Honestly, on this initial design, I'm happy with where it's at. My wish list would be more in the vein of variants, so maybe adding a couple more guns and thicker armor and sacrificing some speed for a war variant, or adding some seats to make it a dropship, or possibly even giving it a taxi skin, similar to Dallas Corbin's taxi on the fifth element, for some one or two passenger transport missions within a system with, of course, even faster speeds for that model. Hey, I'd love to live out some crazy taxi dreams in the verse. Now, of course, with the recent medical Pisces variant, some would like to see the cutter medical variant as well, but I'm not sure on that one, but hey, at some point we might have so many ship options coming out our ears. Since these variants are some quick ships that the team can fling out in less than a year, so I guess we'll see. And that's going to do it for this ship review of the Drake Cutter. Those of you who have watched enough of my reviews know that I'm a fan of the Drake series, even if there are some serious price issues with some of them. Speaking of Drake ships, I will be doing a full review of the Drake Corsair soon, but I've got to get out the Pisces first since these smaller ship reviews are easier to do, and I need to take the proper time to do the Corsair justice, because I wouldn't want to just slap together any old review for the new Drake darling of the verse. Let me know down below how you're liking the Cutter, and also if maybe this video swayed you to join the dark side and come to terms with just how great Drake can be. You're safe here. Anyway, remember to be kind to your fellow gamer, think of Drake as a firm yet loving parent, and stay positive citizens.